Some time ago, I was out visiting a friend in another town and I was walking through a campus and a young man approached me and he asked me if I was a priest and my collar on, I said yes. And he said, I'd like to go to confession. So right there I sat him down and I began to go in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and he stopped me. He goes, I don't know what that means. And I was like, well, how long has it been since your last confession? He goes, I've never been to confession. I'm not even Catholic. He goes, I don't even know if I believe in God. All right. Why did you stop me? What brought you here? And he just hung his head and he said, I'm sick of feeling empty. I'm doing so many things that people said would make me happy in life. And I'm empty. I'm sick of it. And I don't know what I should do. Today is Gaudete Sunday, a Sunday of rejoicing as we look forward towards the coming of Christ when we meet Him at Christmas. So I find it very odd that at the very day we're talking about rejoicing in the Lord, the Gospel's all about morality. All of these people who are awaiting the expectation of the Messiah come to John the Baptist with one question on their lips. Three times it comes up in the Gospel. What should we do? What's the connection between morality and joy? Between the question of how should I act and am I ready to meet the Lord in joy? Because the truth is we all want to be happy. We all want to find joy in our life and everything that we do, every choice that we make in life is for that end. We hope it will make us happy. It will fulfill us. So the question we can ask ourselves today is what I am doing in my life. Are the choices that I'm making filling me with joy or are they leaving me empty afterwards? And the Catechism says that man was created to know, love, and serve God in this life and to be happy with Him forever in the next life. This is both a wonderful and a terrible truth. If it's wonderful that God created us for no other reason but to be with Him forever in heaven. You know, He said to, he appeared to a nun named Sister Mary of the Holy Trinity in the 1900s in Jerusalem. And He said, I wish every soul to understand that I am waiting for her. That beyond this life is a boundless love that awaits her. Let her hasten to come to me to purify herself, to meet love. And let that be the one object of her life, to encounter me in the next life. That's a wonderful truth. And the more you think about it, the more it will fill your heart with joy. But that's also a terrible truth because we're not there yet. We're still in the land of exile. And while we are here waiting on this side of heaven, the constant temptation that we face every single day of our lives is to take these desires that are made for God that will only be satisfied in heaven to try to satisfy them with the things on this earth right here and now that afterwards only leave us empty. That's why the question, what should we do, is so connected to Gaudete Sunday. Because the choices we make in life either fill us with joy or they leave us empty. Because they're either leading us closer to that encounter with Christ, that endless love in heaven, or they're leading us farther away from Him and putting that destination in jeopardy. All of life is filled with moral questions. You know, I'm unhappy in my marriage. What should I do? I'm pregnant outside of wedlock. What should I do? I have same-sex attractions. What should I do? So many people around me have lost faith in Jesus Christ and no longer follow the teachings of the church. 
what should I do? The answer to the question is always the same. Whatever will save your soul, that's what you should do. Whatever will get you to heaven where you can encounter that endless love that awaits you in Christ, that's what you should do. And when you do that, that's when your life begins to be filled with joy. But that will never be the answer that the world offers us. Because the world has no faith in Jesus Christ. So it has no hope in heaven or that boundless love that awaits us. And it has no fear of hell or the consequences of sin and choosing not to follow that way. Therefore the world will only tell us, save your life, not your soul. If you have a desire, satisfy it. If you have a hunger, answer it. If you're suffering, do whatever you can to alleviate yourself of it. If you're unhappy in marriage, divorce. If you're pregnant, don't want a child, abort. If you, don't, if you want sex without the responsibility, contraceptives. All of it, just do whatever you can to save your life here and now. Because no one's thinking about eternity. And it's a very, in all of these things, when we follow them, that's why it's so good that we're on this side of the sexual revolution, because we've seen the devastating effects. And the, la- the wor- last thing that America can ever brag about with all of our affluence is happiness. Stats show that we are one of the most unhappy, statistically, nations of people on this earth, the West, with everything that we have. It leaves us empty. You know, it's such a sad fact, but we need to talk about it because it's part of our time. But did you know that the, the highest suicide rate of any demographic, of any single group of people that you can find, is amongst active transgender peoples? The average suicide rate is about 4%, okay? The people are attempted to suicide or um, attempted or considering it. Amongst active transgenders who have gone through with the process, it's 46%. Ten times the number. And why? This is why it's so important to talk about it. Because society says, if you just do what you feel, if you follow your desires, you'll be happy. You'll find the completion that you're looking for in this life. And they believe it. And they do it. And they get on the other side and they're empty. They realize it wasn't the answer that they're looking for. The world can never offer us the ultimate answer that we're looking for. Because that only comes in Christ. And it's only when we're living according to that desire, that end, that we can truly experience the joy that comes from living a life that is geared towards heaven. Jesus said to that nun, I wish every soul to understand that I am waiting for her. That beyond this life, a boundless love awaits her. Let her hasten to come to me, to purify herself, to meet love. And let that love be the one object that determines her life. The answers of this world always fall short because they always fall short of that boundless love that is awaiting us in eternity. And only those whose moral choices are leading them towards that love will truly experience joy in this life. So I invite you on this Gaudete Sunday to make it real, to Take that same question that everybody is asking in the gospel today. What should I do? Ask yourself if the decisions that you are making in your life are bringing you joy or are they leaving you empty? The things that you do, the people that you're around, what you watch on TV, what you listen to on music, 
Is it filling you with life? Or is it leaving you empty? Even the food you eat, how does it affect you? Is it giving you life? Or is it leaving you depressed afterwards? That's how we know if what we're doing is right or wrong. What does it do to us after? That's how you know what you should do. Psalm said, Cry out with joy and gladness, for among you is the great and holy one of Israel. Nothing in this entire world can give us more reason, us Catholics, more reason if we believe it, to cry out with joy and gladness than when we look upon this altar with faith and see the great and holy one of Israel present among us, God in the flesh in the Eucharist. If you believe that, you will always have reason to rejoice no matter what suffering you're going through because it means you're never alone. It means that that boundless love isn't just waiting for us on the other side of heaven. It comes to meet us right here in whatever hell we find ourselves maybe going through. It is here in this church that Christ comes to you. It is here that boundless love awaits you. Hasten to come to Him. To meet that love and make Him the one object of your life. And you will truly know what it means to rejoice.